How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're covering everything new that was recently added for beta 7 of the developer beta, as well as beta 4 for the public beta, because these two are now officially released. And let's go ahead and quickly go through all the new changes and bug fixes and everything you need to know about these last two beta updates. And of course, timestamps of everything will be in the video description down below for your pleasure. Let's get started with the first new notable change, and that is if you have an iPhone that has an action button right here on the side, You'll notice if you go into your settings and you tap into the, the action button right here on the side in this tab, whenever it fades away to give you like a little overview of the button layout, the wallpaper used to be this color. It used to be an orange. So I'll let it do that little fade. Yep. This is how it used to look like and this is how it looks like now, letting us to believe that the new wallpaper for these upcoming iPhones will come default with this like blue tint almost. So. A subtle change that's definitely worth talking about. Additionally, when you first update your device, some users have been reporting they've been seeing this new welcome screen animation come up, showing you all the new changes of the liquid glass and all that good stuff on these newer generation iPhones on these latest beta updates. This is how the preview looked like, basically just gives you a quick glance guide on all the new stuff and changes. So this will be basically the new welcome screen wherever, whenever you're done setting up your new iPhone. Whenever you close these apps and open like a new app, the animation is much snappier than ever before. That's one thing I definitely have noticed, which is quite nice. And this new animation is much faster and crispier than beta six, because even on Apple CarPlay, it now has this cool like iPad-like style animation, which is really nice. Additionally, Apple did give us a new ability, a new feature you could enable or disable, and it could be located in the settings tab right here on your main page. If you scroll into battery and you go into power mode right in here, you have the ability to enable or disable the adapted power notification which is basically if we lock our screen, it's this thing right here. It just gives us a heads up that adaptive power is enabled and your iPhone will adjust performance to help extend the battery life of your iPhone under the single charge. It's a similar feature we've seen the Apple Watch have. Oop, my phone literally just crashed, but this is literally a feature that the Apple Watch received in the last two beta updates. If the device noticed draining its battery quicker, it's gonna block some background apps to allow you to get the maximum battery life under a single charge to make it throughout the entire day. So that ability is now on the iPhone and it's kind of nice that we have the ability to enable or disable that notification. Additionally, some users have been also reporting that in this page, if you would plug in your device, there will be an additional text on the bottom over here explaining why your device is on hold. If it doesn't give you like an ETA time on how long it will take to to charge to 100%. Some users have been reporting there's a text down here explaining why it's doing that and if it will charge to 100%. So it will actually give you an explanation if your device gets kind of hot, running warm, and it will tell you it will charge to 100%. Just give it time type of thing. Now, if you have an Apple Watch, so long as you're on the latest firmware update for the public beta or the developer beta now, you can now finally have the ability to run the blood oxygen sensor on the Apple Watch as it no longer violates any trademarks that they recently had during like the last lawsuit. So now if we click on the blood oxygen sensor, it no longer gives us a screen like, oh, this is no longer available, blah, blah, blah. You can now finally run the blood oxygen sensor here. And once the results are done, it will no longer be displayed on your Apple Watch. It will be displayed on the health app on the iPhone. In the respiratory tab, and right here you'll be able to see your last blood oxygen sensor result. And in seven days or so, it should be able to run in the background, but all the data will be on the iPhone, not the Apple Watch. But aside from that, now you are up to date on all the new changes that was recently added for beta seven, as well as beta four for the public beta. These next few weeks, uh, next week, I believe beta eight is gonna be the final version of this, like perfected version. And then the next following week is when we should be seeing the RC version. In other words, the master version, the one that's complete, that will be the, the official version of iOS 26 because in less than a month now is when Apple should announce the official release of iOS 26 with all the bugs and stuff like that already resolved, no longer in the public beta stage or developer beta stage. So if we take our calendar out, we currently are on the 19th. The second week of September is likely when we're gonna go ahead and see the Apple keynote when they unveiled 
their next generation of iPhones. And then during this week is when we will actually see the next, the release date for iOS 26. So the RC version should be on the first week of September. And then of course, Beta 7 will be on the 25 because Apple is now doing the week to week update. But other than that, there you guys have it. Now you are up to date when it comes to all the new changes that was added on iOS 26 on these next few betas. If you would ask me how my battery life experience has been like so far, it's been pretty good. It's been on point to like the official version of iOS 18. I have noticed that my battery life isn't draining as quickly as it used to during the early beta stage, nor is my iPhone overheating as much, which is quite nice. So, so these few betas have been more solid than ever before. But after all, it still is the beta. You run the risk of accidentally breaking your device if something goes wrong. But on my iPhone 16 Pro, it's been pretty solid surprisingly now. Anyways, there you guys have it. If you wish to watch more, maybe you'd like to see everything new on the Apple CarPlay side of things. I go through greater detail on all the new changes and stuff in the last few beta updates in this video over there. Thank you so much for watching.